Hello friends, my name is Sarah and today we're talking about Allegiant. Hooray! We are officially finishing the Divergent series and this one was my least favorite of the series but I had the most thoughts and opinions about it. Fair warning, this is going to get pretty spoilery, especially when we get to talking about the end. So if you have not read this book, don't watch this review. To be perfectly honest, I'm still not totally 100% sure how to rate it. Like I said, it was my least favorite of the series, but it had the highest ranking on the Emotional Hangover Recovery Time Index. Thank you, Sweeney. So in this book, unlike the first two, we have two narrators. It's not just Triss, but it switches back and forth between Triss and Four, which takes the one major thing that Veronica Roth has had going for her the whole time, her pacing, and kills it a little bit. One of the big things that made this book my least favorite is there were so many subplots and different things that were happening and much as you expected at the end of the second book you do start to get some answers. You do start to learn you know really what happened and why you know they were put in this experiment and what's happening in the outside world and all of these other things but while you get the answers to those questions you get just as many other questions that don't actually get answered. Like with Triss's mother, for example, okay, so she was from the outside world and like volunteered to go into the project in Chicago. And the whole reason that she was sent in there was to, you know, prevent, you know, erudite and all these other people from like killing an entire faction. And yet the people, you know, that are working on the government side of things have no issue with wiping everyone's memories and basically restarting their entire lives. The plot really, really suffered for me and it really felt like Roth could have spent a lot more time developing the world that she put her characters into and giving you more information about that world earlier on in the story so that you don't get overloaded with information in this third book. Even though this is my least favorite book, the relationship between Triss and Four is my favorite in this particular book. And a big part of that is because by this point they've dealt with all sorts of crap. But at the same time, this there's some stuff that happens that in this book that really puts their relationship to the test. And one of the things that I really loved about this and, and the way that their relationship plays out in this story is that in a lot of books, especially in a lot of young adult novels, the relationships between, you know, your protagonist or whatever seem pretty superficial. They don't really deal with a whole lot of real world issues, but at the same time they're just like, oh my gosh, I love you, we're gonna be together forever. And that's just not realistic. And I recognize that obviously this is a dystopian novel, so you know, there are a lot of elements of this that aren't realistic because it's a post-apocalyptic world, but I really did appreciate the fact that even though they're young, even though they're only 16 and 18, Roth has Triss and Four really wrestle with some big issues that definitively come up in pretty much any relationship that you would experience today. The two big themes that she really pulls forth through the relationship between Triss and Four are one is this notion of like the soulmate and having, you know, the perfect relationship. I think a lot of times media, in particular chick flicks and other YA romance novels perpetuate this idea that once you find the person you're supposed to be with, it's just going to be super easy. You're never going to fight, you're never going to have issues, you're never going to, you know, butt up against each other. And if it gets hard, then clearly something's wrong. Clearly you weren't meant to be with this person. And that thought process and idea is so, so unhealthy and so detrimental. And I think it's a big part of the reason why we wind up with as many divorces as we have in the world today. And that is something that Roth fights against in this book. There's, you know, some stuff that happens where Triss then winds up questioning whether or not she can stay with Four, whether or not she can forgive him and be in this relationship with him. And there's this one particular scene where she basically winds up telling him, she's like, forgiveness isn't the point. Forgiveness is not the question. The point is we're going to fight, we're going to frustrate each other and lie to each other and disappoint each other, but the point is that they, we choose each other every single day. We wake up and even on those days where we fight and we lie and we get angry, we still choose each other. I choose him and he chooses me. And that's what 
a solid relationship is is about. If you want to have a successful marriage or a successful relationship, you have to recognize that the other person isn't perfect and that the other person is going to disappoint you and is going to screw up and is going to make you want to scream and walk away and never see them again. There are going to be those moments no matter how perfect for each other you are and I loved that that's something that Roth, you know, discussed in this novel, that it wasn't just that their relationship was perfect and all of these things, but that they really had to wrestle with whether or not this is a thing that they both wanted to fight for and whether or not this was a thing that they, they valued in their lives and they had to make the conscious decision that yes, I am going to stay in this even when it's hard, even when it hurts, even when I want to punch that other person in the face. One of the other themes that she brings into play, which I thought was really fascinating, um, and it's something that comes into play in individual relationships, you know, romantic relationships, but also just something that a lot of people, myself included, have dealt with in their lives, which is this notion that for whatever reason, there's something about you that is inherently wrong or broken or you, and that you are not a whole person because of X, Y, or Z. And you see that played out in the fact that we learn that Four is not actually divergent, that he, you know, has some of the characteristics of a divergent, but he's still genetically damaged, quote unquote, and that Triss is, you know, genetically pure and therefore she is a whole person and he is not. and you see Four wrestle with that and, and sort of sink into himself. In a lot of situations, push Triss away because he has a difficult time dealing with this idea that he is not a whole person and that she is. And then Triss pushes back and says, you know what, I don't care what they say. They're all jerks. Like, you are a whole person and your genes have nothing to do with that. And I love the scene between the two of them where he thanks her for that and where he, you know, talks to her and says, you are the only person that, you know, has really, really believed in me and has really believed that I'm perfectly fine how I am and that I am a whole person. And, you know, even when scientists told you that I was genetically damaged, you were like, screw them, I don't care, I know who you really are. And I think, whether it's in a romantic relationship or not, we all need a person at some point in our life to to push back when we push away and to come to us and say, you know what, I don't care what other people say, I don't care what other people think, you are wonderful just the way you are and you are a whole person and you are worthy of people's time and people's love and people's energy and it doesn't matter what this person or what the world or anyone else says, you are whole and you are wonderful just the way you are, just the way you were created. So now we're going to talk about the ending because, oh my goodness, I had so many feelings and so many thoughts about the way that this story ended. So I cried when she died, uh, I was not expecting it at all, and the big reason this book even got three and a half stars from me is because the emotional hangover I got from Triss's death was just absurd. Like, I had to find the first two movies the next day and watch them, not because I felt like I needed to still be in the Divergent world, but because I knew that if I watched the movies I would start nitpicking the changes that were made and it would get me out of like my, ah, this happened, like, head. So the thing that bothered me the most initially about Triss's death was not the fact that Triss died because not everyone survives a war and you know not every book has to end with a happy ending but the thing that made me so angry was not the fact that Triss died it was the fact that because Triss died Four's heart got broken and he had to deal with the aftermath of that and he had to process through all that and I was like dude he's already been through so much with his father and his mother and he's lost literally everyone except for Triss and he had to pull her away too like it just ah oh, it made me so angry I was not not happy then I started talking about it a little bit more with a few people specifically my friend Annie on Twitter and she made the comment that she felt like if Triss hadn't died, if she had survived, it would have felt 
almost like a due machina moment. If you're not familiar with the due machina, it's this um, literary device that we've used very often in Greek plays where the god, um, god of the machine is what it means, and, and the god would arrange things so that the story ended up a certain way. So Annie made this comment, she felt like if Triss had actually survived, it would have felt like a due machina moment. And I thought that was really interesting, and the more that I thought about it, I realized I actually feel the opposite way. I feel like Triss dying was a due machina moment. It was almost like Roth said, even though after all Triss has been through, she never would have left her gun. Like, she would have been super paranoid and looking over at her back until everything was safe and sound. Even though that's really what Triss would have done as a character, I'm just gonna have her forget her gun this one time that happens to get her killed. I'm sure that there was a reason that Roth decided Triss needed to die, and I, I get a lot of people's point that going back to the theme from the first book about selflessness and bravery and how Triss as a character is her most selfless when she's her most brave, I get that that sort of brings her character full circle in some respects, but at the same time, she could have been fully selfless and fully brave and still acted like she has the entire rest of the series where she's super vigilant and not died as a result. So there you have it friends, that is my final review of the Divergent series. I hope you have enjoyed hearing my thoughts on it this week and I would love to hear yours as well now, especially with such a controversial ending to the series. Do you agree with the ending? Do you think it should have ended differently? Do you think it would have changed how people felt about the book at all if Triss and Four had wound up living happily ever after? Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this set of reviews and I will see you next time. Bye! Uh, hi Nigel. Do you want to be part of the book review too? Huh? Everyone this is Nigel. Say hi baby! Yes, he is my cat. He's gonna go down now so I can finish this review.